My name is Carlton Cartwright. I'm the executive director for Veterans Memorial and Multicultural Histories Incorporated. Today is Saturday, December 10th, 2022. And we're here at uh, St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Delray Beach. And sir, what is your name? Helen A. Monack. Okay, Mr. Monack. And uh, what, what city do you live in? Boynton Beach, Florida. Okay. How long have you resided in Boynton? Uh, Part-time for 21 years, uh, full-time last nine. What, what branch of the service were you in? Army. Okay, and uh, where were you when you went into the Army? Uh, my first uh, was six weeks of basic for officers down at San Antonio, Texas, Fort Sam. Okay. Uh, where were you living prior to going into the service? Uh, Philadelphia. I was uh, graduated dental school in 1968. Okay. Um, and that was straight out of high school? Uh, no. High school, I went to uh, college, Fairleigh Dickinson University, and then transferred to dental school. Where, where was that university at? Teaneck, New Jersey. Okay. okay, New Jersey. That's where you grew up? That's where I grew up, right in that town next to Teaneck, yes. Okay. And what town was that? Pagoda, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so did you finish college before you went into the service? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, what, were you, what was your major while you were in university? Uh, at Fairleigh Dickinson, my, my major was sciences. Okay. Biosciences. So it sounds to me like you were an officer when you went into the military? Uh, they, yeah, I was inducted as a captain. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. And uh, what was your MOS at that time? Uh, dental, uh, medical dental detachment. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, okay, so you were getting your education prior to going to, why did you choose uh, that branch of the service? The Army? Mm -hmm. Well, I was in ROTC. I was actually a third alternate at West Point uh, because I was originally interested in engineering, but uh, I decided, uh, I, well, they decided for me, they didn't accept it. So I went uh, to school because I to commute. I commuted to school in Teaneck. In Teaneck? Yeah, at Fairleigh uh -huh. Dickinson University. Okay. And so, again, please forgive me, you were in basic training where? It's Fort Sam, Houston, San Antonio. Okay, and how long was basic training? Uh, eight weeks. Eight weeks. Were there any casualties? Anybody get hurt during basic? Uh, no. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay, um, so what were they training you for? Uh, basically to understand discipline in the Army. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, as an officer, correct? As an officer. I understand. Okay, so um, how long was that officer's training? That was the eight weeks. Eight weeks, eight weeks. Where was your next duty station? Fort, San, uh, Fort Lewis uh, in Washington, uh, state of Washington. What state of Washington. During basic so, training, uh, were there any casualties? Anybody get hurt? No, good. not at all. That's good. Not that I know of. So um, your next duty station was Fort Washington? Fort Lewis. Tacoma, Washington. Fort, sorry about that. Yes, okay. And um, how long was that tour? That was one year. One year. My okay. first year. What was your What was your duty there? I was uh, in the dental corps, and it was to treat incoming uh, members of the army enlisted men that were being trained to go overseas. Okay. And what time period was that? That was from September 1968 to September 1969. So we're talking about um, people preparing to go to Vietnam? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh-huh. Okay, so... Um, we had to get them ready to be able to ship out with uh, decent dental care. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what was the total time that you served in the military? Two years. And so you basically went in as a captain? Went in as a captain. And Mission at Board. the end of the two years, what was your rank? Captain. You was, okay. Out. Gotcha. So uh, tell us about um, the, the training instruction that you received in, in Texas. In Texas. Right. Uh, how was the training? What were the instructors like? Well, the instructors uh, understood that we were all medical and dental personnel. Mm -hmm. and our training was basically to uh, how to carry a 45, um, how to uh, understand uh, military tactics, 
uh, add some of that in ROTC and undergrad. So, uh, uh, and, and basically do target shooting and be able to uh, uh, take the weapon and uh, break it down and put it back together. Okay, which, there was, how many weapons did you train on? One, 45. And that was a 45, and how did that go? Um, it went as, I guess for us as being in the medical dental field, it went, uh, okay, I mean, I learned how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we were much interested in it. But Anybody get hurt? Hopefully not. No, not that I know of, unless somebody went into the swimming pool and didn't come out. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Uh, how was how was the food? Did you you feel like you had everything that you needed while while you were in the uh, service? Not a problem. Uh, my wife and my uh, infant son came along. He was he was uh, just four months old at that point. Okay. All right. Um. Uh, I take that back. He was uh, five months old. Five months old. Okay. Oh, did, was your wife serving at that time or no? No. She, she but came she, down to Fort Sam with me. Right. Uh, and our baby, and we go uh, stayed in a motel. Oh, okay. Not really on base. Right. Uh, did you get to travel at all while you were in service? Um, other than Vietnam, no. Uh, oh, uh, we we R and R. Uh huh. To Hawaii and a week uh, to uh, uh, Japan. So how long were you stationed in Vietnam? Uh, one year. One year. Where? In uh, my first tour of duty was uh, first. Uh, Six months from September was to uh, uh, Kuchi. Uh, the base was 25th Lightning Brigade, and uh, we were the medical dental atta attachment to, uh, to uh, uh, work on uh, in medical and dental field. Okay. Um, did you experience a lot of casualties? Um, we no, it was pretty quiet. It was after uh, the Tet Offensive and the, the uh, Viet Cong and uh, Vietnam, uh, North Vietnam uh, Army was uh, rebuilding. So we didn't have a lot. We had some incoming uh, shells and uh, basically uh, 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 my my roommate uh, got the Purple Heart for uh, he hit his head on the uh, on the front doorway as he ran him over to get to the uh, bunker. Run that by me again? <laughs> Third day in country. It was, a, it was an accident, right? Oh, yeah. So what happened now? Third day in country. Uh -huh. I had the hooch, uh, the bunk in the back. He was next to the door. The uh, alarm, uh, the, the uh, incoming alarm went off. Mm -hmm. Next thing I knew, I was in the bunker, and he was nowhere to be found. When the, the all clear came back, I went up uh, there, and he was unconscious at the door. Okay. I ran him over. I didn't realize it. I was sleeping, and uh, I ran him over. When you say ran him over, you mean you walked over him? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't remember what I did, but when I come back, it had to be me. You were the only other guy in that barracks. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I think I think I understand. Um, we're still good friends. <laughs> while, while while you were there, um, did you travel any place besides the base? You know, at, at Fort Lewis. Uh, uh, well. Okay, so at Fort Lewis in Washington, uh, did it's, you? It's Fort Sam, but we did tour around San Antonio mm -hmm. a little bit with my wife and baby. But being he was so young, we really stayed near the hotel motel. And, and that's why you were in the states, right? Right. Okay, so um, did you get any downtime R and R to like leave the base and take the family on a vacation or anything? Uh, in uh, at Fort Lewis, mm -hmm. uh, not really. No, we, no, we didn't go. We had weekends free most of the time, except when I was on call. Right. And uh, so we would travel to uh, uh, Seattle, um, other areas in in uh, western Washington State, uh, Vancouver, up to Canada, uh, Canada uh, British Columbia. Oh, okay. So you did get to travel. A bit. Yeah, we did. Okay. All right. Nice. So now, while you were in Asia. Yes. Okay, while well, you were in Vietnam, how long, what, you said you were there for a year? For a year. Okay, did you get out of Vietnam while you were there? Or? Yeah, twice. Where'd you, where'd you get to go? First, uh, I took a vacation to, uh, we had, I get two weeks, so I took a vacation to Japan. My wife couldn't have joined me uh, at that time, and 
We, I toured around Tokyo area, stayed at the office of billets. How was that? That was nice. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed that. How was the, the food, the economy, the people? Fine. Very no problem okay. at all. And what year was that? In the 70s? Or? That was 1970. Right, right, exactly. Okay. Right. Um, were there any, 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 uh, any negativity towards you as far as being the military uh, personnel? Not in Japan at all. Not in Japan. Okay. Good. You're welcome. Good news. Do you, you feel like you had um, all the supplies that you needed while you were in the service? Absolutely. Had everything well supplied, not a problem. Okay. Uh, the base I was at uh, was the headquarters for the 25th okay. Lightning Brigade, so we were adequately supplied. Uh, we had no problem. Okay. You, were, you were never a prisoner of war or anything, were you? No, I'm never a prisoner of war. Good, good, good for you. Right. Um, how about uh, medals or citations? I uh, was awarded the Bronze Star for mm -hmm. meritorious service because I commanded a mass unit for my second six months of uh, duty. And uh, that was during the Cambodian invasion. Uh -huh. And uh, we were sent to, uh, to a place called Xi'an. Uh -huh. And uh, at that point in time, the 11th Armored Care was supposed to come down to Xi'an base, uh, which was uh, uh, formerly the headquarters for the 1st Army, which was uh, one of the first groups to uh, be sent back to the States. And they were coming out of the Pleiku Highlands to, to take, do that, uh, to cover the northern end of Saigon. Uh, instead, they, they were diverted to Cambodia. Okay. But we were not. We went to the base thinking that they were going to show up. And uh, it took 42 days for any have any support uh, at all. And we were basically in this large compound with just a medical dental brigade and a mechanized repair shop. Okay. For 42 days. So I was, uh, and I was the commanding officer at that point. Oh. And uh, so I had to make sure that we were secure. There was a uh, Viet Cong sympathized vi village only about a quarter of a mile down the road. Uh, and uh, we were very vulnerable. So I decided that we needed to secure our area, otherwise we would be sitting ducks. What did you, so that sounds like it was definitely a certain amount of pressure and stress. A lot. A lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. How did you, how did you, how did you or your uh, unit deal with that pressure and stress? Well, I had a, the first thing we did is we secured, we reduced the perimeter and to, so that we could support it. I mean, I, I don't think there was a man in my group other than my dental assistant that had any experience firing uh, uh, M16. Okay. Uh, he was a, uh, originally in 101st Airborne and he became my dental assistant in his uh, second tour of duty. Okay. Um, and he helped me a lot. He was uh, terrific in helping me do strategy around what we were doing. The other thing we did is that we uh, decided that we were going to go into the village to see if we could help them. And hopefully that they would need us more than that they would not need us. <laughs> which, was, which is one thing we did. I'm very proud of the fact that the 42 days I didn't have one casualty in our year. Okay. And which is also a point of concern. You, how many, okay, how many, um, under your command, how many soldiers were there? Well, we were um, a dental detachment mm -hmm. with uh, two physicians, two dentists, and uh, five enlisted men. Okay. And the other was a platoon of mechanized repair mechanics. How many were in a platoon? Uh, about 41, so we were a total of about 50 under my command, 50 in this large base. Gotcha. Okay, and so uh, you were providing services though to just your unit or to other units that were, you know, coming and going? We were basically waiting for the 11th off care to show up. We didn't know they were in Cambodia. Okay, and they did didn't, they? They didn't let us know that. Did they show up? They showed up 42 days after we arrived. Okay, and in, in that, what, what was the name of that unit? 11th Armored Cav. Oh, okay, and were, did they have casualties? Uh, they get, did in Cambodia, yeah. They did. But uh, they were 
medevac, not to us. Not to, okay. They okay. were medevac either to uh, real hospital. We were just a mash unit. So they just, from what, wherever they were, they, they weren't something. What is, a, what, I, what is a mash unit? Medical uh, assistant army uh, service hospital. Okay, all right. So yeah, that's what I'm um, sort of... I set that up. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had nobody to treat other than the 50 men that I had. Right. There really wasn't much to do. Okay. But you stayed safe and you had, you had, you had, sounds like you have a, a decent amount of responsibility that, that you had to oversee. Yes. Uh, so, okay. But you were fortunate in that you didn't have to deal with a casualty. Um... No, we didn't. Thank okay. Thank you. We didn't have to do that. All right. Um, so, the again to reiterate the the length of period that you were there was for for only a year in Vietnam. In Vietnam, yes. Uh, was there any issues with you staying in touch with your family while you were? Well, there was always stress uh, from my wife not knowing what was going on, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we finally met in Hawaii on R and R. Okay. And, uh, that, without my son. Okay. Uh, while you were in Vietnam, where, where were they living? They were living in New Jersey with her parents. Okay, all right. All right. So they weren't on the seas with you. No. But she, eventually, she got to come and you you visit with her visit in Hawaii. For one week in Hawaii. Uh -huh. was, okay. uh, the R and R that we were entitled to. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so any any negative incidences? Uh, you know, as far as you know, dealing with the with the enemy at that time. Uh, Negative? No, no, really. Uh, other than the fact that uh, we were, um, they had air, air bombing at the uh, Kuchi, mm -hmm. but in uh, in Mona. How far away was that from you? Where my that was with the twenty fifth uh, infantry. That was about uh, twenty five miles west of us, up on US one. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> That's where my colonel was. That's where I had the support from the medical detachment. Okay. So anytime we needed support supplies, stuff like that, I had no problem getting it either from there or going to the main headquarters in Saigon. Okay. Um, what did um. What what did the men that you were responsible? Did you, by the way, I'm saying men. Were there any uh, nurses that were assigned to you? Any female? There was in Fuji, but not not in. Uh, in Xi'an. Okay, all right, okay. Um, so, I mean, you, you said you received a bronze, bronze star, correct? Yes. Were there any other medals, I believe? Did you? No. Met, okay, that's fine. Okay, so um, how did you get along with, were there any other officers around besides the enlisted personnel that you worked with? Yeah, well, two medical. So you were physicians? They were one, captains one also. The they were all captains, you were all they captains. They were all captains, I got a temporary um, promotion of major mm -hmm. because they wanted me to give the orders if we needed they needed one person and with the other three all being equal captains that would have been chaos conflict yeah right conflict. so I, I got to command the unit so you only temporarily a major temporarily okay. <laughs> decommissioned <Yeah. laughs> when I when I got it when I left the army uh, they uh, just put me back to regular captain Gotcha. Okay. All right. No problem. All right. So after you tour in Vietnam, uh, where did you go? Um, discharge. Okay. San Francisco. So while you were there, you said you went to Japan. Did you go any any other visit any other locales in, no. in the Asian theater? No. That was it. Okay. Uh huh. So what did you do after the service? After the service, I uh, uh, worked for a few dentists when I got out, mm -hmm. and then in 1970. Uh, to I opened my own practice. Where? What state? New Jersey. Okay. And how long did, did you maintain that? Um, that was, uh, that was two, about 27 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you use your GI Bill for anything when you got out of the military? No. No? No, not at all. Not your home loan, education? No. Your kids? No, oh, my education was complete. It was all done. And, yeah. Good job. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, did you have you maintained any close friendships from from the service? 
Yes, I uh, have a friend out in Minneapolis that was stationed with me at Fort Lewis. Mm -hmm. We still correspond and we've seen each other. He's come east, I've come up there. He what? what is he that? came east to New Jersey to visit me. Okay. Oh. And I went to Minnesota to see them a couple of times. Great. He came down to us to see a couple of times. Okay. And we're still in, still in communication. Right? Besides what I've already asked you about, um, two of your most memorable you know, memories from the military? Two, okay. Uh, the first was uh, landing in Vietnam. Okay. And being greeted by the colonel who was at Fort Lewis with me, and I found out he requested me. Oh, okay. So, All right. Uh, so I discussed that. But basically, he met me at the uh, airport. Right. And he took me to Gucci, and he was my uh, commanding officer. Okay. All right, and one more? One more was the time I was in, uh, in Zeon when uh, we had to go into the village and try to win their confidence over that we could help them medically and dentally and to take care of the village uh, people and uh, hopefully that they would understand that they were kept compassionate and that we're there to help them and not attack them. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so that uh, sort of, it sounds like a PR job. Yeah, exactly. Is that what it's, so, yeah, tell yeah, us about that. We, How did that work? Well, I figured they didn't know me, and uh, they, if they realized how small a unit we were, we were just sitting ducks. So I said, we got to go in and, uh, and see what they needed, make ourselves available, because I had nobody to treat the base, basically and uh, treat them, which we did. I went on one Sunday, the first Sunday we were down there. Right. And uh, with everybody but four of my personnel, and uh, we asked uh, for the head of the village to come talk to me. It was reluctant, and nobody would come out of the uh, huts at all. He finally did, and I tried to explain to him when I had an interpreter uh, that spoke Vietnam, Vietnamese and French, mm -hmm. uh, who assisted me in dealing with them, and to tell them that we're there to treat anything, to questions, no questions asked, no questions given, and, uh, and we would treat them, and if they had any type of injuries or health condition, we'll do our best to keep them healthy. Okay. And the, that first visit, we only had one patient. And, and the, what did it grow into? Well, it grew into we were treating the whole village in the 40 days. How many? And we re set up their uh, uh, latrine system, which was part of the problem. Oh. Most of the village had dysentery oh. and diarrhea. Mm. And uh, we were well received. We, I knew after a couple of weeks that we, they needed us more than they need, didn't need us. Gotcha. And uh, we were basically secure and safe. How large was that village? Um, I would say it was about a hundred uh, villagers in there. Right. At any one time. That was, that was my guess. You know, it was hard to tell, but yeah, I could tell by uh, who lined up uh, for treatment down uh, as we were continued our treatment. And we continued that even after the 11th Army Care finally showed up until I was uh, left Vietnam. Okay, and so. Basically, you did uh, some good public relations with uh, these people. Um, so you said there was dysentery. Any other diseases? Um, Cholera? Male malnutrition, uh, bullet wounds. Really? Oh, yeah. Who, why, what were those a result of? Bullet Probably wounds. their contact outside, but not, not against us. Got it. Okay. okay. Whoever, I mean, they, they, had, they had a medicine man, but he wasn't very adequately trained. Right. So basically you were a medical support unit for the civilians That's in the, country. Exactly. Oh, uh, wow. But I, the, 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 the motive was to keep us safe, and it worked. Right. Okay. All right. And, right. I, and I think I converted a lot of people in the village to understand that Americans were not bad. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I said. Well, I'm, believe me, I'm not downplaying public relations is very, very important. 
And I think it's exceptional that you were able to accomplish that, that, that mission, even though I'm not sure if you were really fully aware that that was, that was a mission, but uh, it sounds like you got the job done, that's for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm really very curious about the relationship that uh, you and your unit had, you know, with, with, these, uh, with the civilians there in, in country. Well, they, they were very appreciative of getting healthier. Did you, did you have uh, any gatherings, dinners, you know, did you, how, how was the, in, the interaction with not only you, but also the people in your unit and the civilians? Well, the interaction was to be there to help them with their needs, health and sanitary needs, mm -hmm. which we did successfully. And uh, on my last week of uh, being in Vietnam, they actually, we had a little celebration in the village and they honored me. There you go. So That's what I was after. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, I left on good terms. That's good. Excellent. Most, most excellent. Okay. Um, let's see. So, I, I was, especially since you were a medical unit, I would imagine you had, do you feel like, throughout your, your military career, do you feel like um, you had everything that you needed? Supplies. I had everything I needed, um, without, without question. That they were really uh, medical treatment in Vietnam. I th thought was exceptional. Um, they we really had everything down pat as far as uh, uh, triage and, and where to send uh, soldiers that were more critically ill that we could treat. Um, my basic duty was sick call for dental but I also was trained in head neck wounds. And I... Uh, what now? I'm sorry? Head neck wounds. I, I did shrapnel removal and things like that, and sutures, and helped the physicians in their job. Okay, and those, those, um, those incidences were from... Who had those? That was, that was mainly um, up in Coochie. The civilians? No, the oh. Army. Oh. We, had, we had fire bases, we had, we had incoming, uh, Coochie was pretty secure, but we had, we had ring of fire bases around Coochie, and, and, and we were right near the uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail. So that was military personnel coming? Coming to, to us, because we had a main hospital there. And how, long, how often did, did those, were those occurrences? It was sit around and wait, but when we had a rush of the wounded, because there was attacks, in the, up in the hills and uh, Tainan and other areas and on the Ho Chi Minh Trail that we would have incoming and uh, it was all hand, hands on deck. And these casualties, you were providing services? Absolutely. So uh, again, uh, yeah, right, okay, so what, what kind of numbers were you dealing with on, on uh, I average? would say there may have been overwhelmed with wounded maybe three or four times in the whole six months I was in Gucci. Okay, and what were those numbers like? Uh, 15 to 20 personnel helicoptered back to Coochie. At a time? At a time. Okay. And uh, our, our unit at back there, we were uh, six dentists. Uh, I would think there were 12 physicians in, okay. in, the, in the unit back where we had. It was a mini hospital. But you just weren't doing dental work. I was doing sick call in the morning, sure. <laughs> what we would do is we would have incoming sick call. So even if they were out in a secure area, they had to come in to get help in our area. Gotcha. So we would treat them and then send them back to that. And, and by the grace of God, did you suffer any losses? Not Gucci, no. Okay. Anywhere? No. No, I didn't see it. Yeah, well, my dental assistant, um, he lost his life two weeks after I left the country. He was in his third tour of duty. Wow. Okay. So, uh, uh, he, uh, I guess they, they, he went out on an ambush mission, uh -huh. and they got him. But that's what I understand. I wasn't sure. Gotcha. That's um, the only guy I personally knew that was uh, uh, killed in action. Oh, all right. I understand. Okay. Um, anything? Of that nature that you have not already mentioned, uh, any travel 
that you... Well, I went to Saigon a few times for supplies oh. with my dental assistant as my driver. And what was that like? Uh, it was during the day. Mm -hmm. We had one incident where we were sniped at. Uh, but other than that, it was pretty... Uh, Did anybody get hurt? No. No? But you, you were under sniper fire? We were under, I was under sniper fire. And what was that experience like? Harrowing, but my dental assistant knew what to do. Okay, so if you don't mind, why, what, why are you, uh, why, what made it harrowing? What was the category? Well, first of all, the, he, he warned me. He said, I see somebody out in a rice paddy, and it's not time for seed planting or harvesting. So I, don't think, I think he's up to no good. And he took it, he uh, took his M16, put it on his lap. Uh huh. He said, uh, uh, Captain, I told you not to wear your hat with, with your bars on it, so you, <laughs> I think you're at the target. <laughs> so he, uh, the guy dropped his whatever hole, he just picked up a rifle, he said, I told you, and he started shooting. And as soon as he saw that my dental assistant was prepared, he dropped his rifle and ran. So that was the answer. Oh, really? Oh, so the person, the sniper took off. Took off. Once your dental system returned fire. Okay. But, but, actually, then, but actually, he never fired at us. Actually. Actually, he had a gun in hand and when he saw it. Because that was my next question, <laughs> was were you, were you all returning fire? And was the initiation from the person in the rice pan? No. No. He just spotted him out there. Okay, all right, so no, you weren't shot at, in other words. No. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's where I was going. It was, it was preventive uh, action. I understand, no, I, we all love a little prevention, absolutely, I, I get that totally. Okay, so this has been a great interview. Um, anything, any other incidences that you remember that you may possibly have? Well, it's if, after the discharge, if you want me to go into that, we discharged out of San Francisco. Okay. And um, uh, flying back to New Jersey, uh, the first stop was uh, in, uh, from Vietnam was, well, we landed in um, uh, Guam. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't we treated very friendly. And we landed you were or were not? Were not. In, the, in the Philippines? Guam? Um, Guam. Isn't that in the Philippines? No, I think that's, uh, no, I think that's, not too far from Hong Kong. Okay. Or Guam or Japan. Okay. Southern Japan. So what was the, what was the the problem? The just they thought we were uh, not doing the right thing, I guess. Gotcha. I mean, I mean, we were not treated very friendly. I heard from other officers that left the service at the same time that they weren't treated very friendly in the states either. What year was that? Nineteen. When I got this charge was nineteen seventy. Uh huh. One nineteen seventy. Okay. So uh, I landed in New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, and I was greeted by my wife, and there were people with signs uh, protesting the Vietnam War mm -hmm. at that time. So uh, for a long time, I did was reluctant to talk about it. Right. I didn't see because it. Of the way we were thought about coming home, and uh, so that was a disappointment. Gotcha. Uh, I think I asked you already, uh, you, you did maintain some friendships after the military? Yes, my uh, longtime friend is, uh, is living in uh, Hutchinson, Minnesota. Right, okay. So, and you did your dental pra practice until you retired? I had dental practice. I was a professor at the university, Fairleigh Fairly Dickinson University, for 12 years. I also did uh, practice management besides my practice. Okay, okay. Is there anything that you feel like, uh, anything else that you may have left out that you'd like to share? No, I think I, that's about my total experience for okay. two years I was in. So just, just a couple more. Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Absolutely. How? I feel that sometimes uh, the chain of command is not as good as it could be, mm -hmm. and what gets back to the politicians is not always accurate. Okay. All right. Sorry if I have to say that. No, that's, it's, it's uh, you know, you've earned that. Um, 
just so it sounds like uh, I don't know lack of communication or Strategy, you feel like, okay uh, mm -hmm. you know I think maybe the politicians and the commanding uh, commanders of the military are not on the same boat at the time. Gotcha. Um, so how did your service and experiences affect your life? Uh, affected my life in a way that I felt that I had to give back um, because I served my country honorably mm -hmm. and even though I wasn't treated as well as I think I should have been at the beginning, people came around and, and uh, understood that. But uh, uh, so I service to the American people was really what I was all about. Mm -hmm. Whatever I could do to improve the lives of the people I met was important to me. Gotcha. Okay, well, I want to thank you for a, a great interview. Thank you. And uh, I also want to thank you for your service. Thank you. Yes, sir.